Before this video begins, I'd just like to give an extra special thank you to my patron, The Beast Boss. Links to join the Patreon can be found in the description down below. I watched the Doctor Who Joy to the World preview in 0.25x speed, and here's what I found. Okay, so about a month ago, Doctor Who had a panel in Hall H at San Diego Comic-Con. During this, they revealed a preview of this year's Christmas special, Joy to the World. But what does this preview actually tell us about the episode? Okay, so I've already covered this preview in an episode of my podcast, the TARDIS Coffee Break podcast, but I missed some things during that very impromptu breakdown. And so I wanted to do a much more in-depth breakdown of the preview of Joy to the World in its own dedicated video. And we've also had some more confirmations about the episode since then that I want to discuss in this video. But before we get into the breakdown, what do we know about this episode so far? So we know this episode is going to be written by Stephen Moffat, which is quite unconventional for a Christmas special considering he's not the current showrunner of Doctor Who. We would have expected this episode to be written by Russell C. Davies as he's the one who's showrunning the show at the moment, but we do know it is officially being written by Stephen Moffat. We also know this episode is being directed by Alex Pillay, who hasn't directed an episode of Doctor Who before. He's known for shows like Bridgerton. We know this episode is of course going to be starring Shooty Gatwa as the Doctor, Nicola Coughlin as Joy, Jonathan Aris as the Silurian Melnak and Joel Fry in an as yet undisclosed role. And we also know this episode is of course going to be released on Christmas Day 2024. So without further ado, let's get into the preview clip. So we open on the Queen's Hotel in Manchester in 1940, which appears to have been a real hotel built in 1845, but I couldn't find much more information on it than that, so I'm not sure if this is meant to be that real hotel. <laughs> We see the character of Basil watching the bombing through his binoculars on the balcony of the Queen's Hotel, which people thought this was Sir Patrick Stewart during the filming for some reason. I don't know if they were joking about that at the time because to me it was very clearly not Sir Patrick Stewart, but I'm still not entirely sure if we know who this actor is yet. I also think it's entirely possible this shot and this moment could be a reference to another Stephen Moffat episode, The Empty Child, where we similarly see Captain Jack Harkness on the balcony watching the World War II bombings through his binoculars. Ham and she's toasting a pumpkin latte. So we then see the doctor appear through a door that is always locked, trying to deliver a cafe or room service order of a ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. He's in a brand new costume, which is very similar to his Church on Ruby Road and Space Babies costume. And we find out that this door has always been locked. It's locked. Well, that door's always been locked. Which really feeds into what Moffat likes to do often, where he makes the ordinary feel more extraordinary, like he did with statues in Blink and other episodes. <laughs> We then get to the Orient Express in Italy, 1962. We have previously been on the Orient Express in Series 8 on Mummy on the Orient Express, but that was a replica in space, whereas this is the real Orient Express. <laughs> The woman on the Orient Express is reading Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie, who of course has previously appeared in Unicorn and the Wasp in series four. And the doctor comes through the door with the same order as before, a ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. Ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. I'd first assumed that the backdrop behind him was just the train, but I now think it might be something different, which I'll get onto later when we get a clearer shot of the backdrop of this door the doctor keeps peering through later on in the trailer. We then get to the base camp on Everest in 1953. Now the first successful ascent to the summit of Mount Everest happened in 1953, so I assume this is meant to be that same party that first successfully reached the summit of Mount Everest in 1953. We know that the Icefall party reached the base camp on Mount Everest on the 12th of April 1953, which is likely what this base camp is meant to be. And we know the first two people to successfully reach the summit of Mount Everest were Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, who I feel like are probably the two figures we see outside the tent. And of course we have the Doctor coming in once again with the same order as before, ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. Ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. Never mind. We then finally reach the last location of this trailer, Sandringham Hotel in London, 2024. There does appear to be a real hotel called that in London, but I'm not sure if this is meant to be that hotel or a fictional one. Oh. 
we see Nicola Coughlin's character Joy getting out of a taxi just outside the hotel and we get a joke about her being single which is also mentioned later on. Single? Oh, does it show? <laughs> Room. Meaning this is likely going to be a relevant part of her character. Oh, it's just that door, isn't it? It's always a door like that in a hotel room, a funny locked one. Joy makes note of another locked door in the hotel room and comments on how there's always a locked door in hotel rooms. Oh. Hello. Merry Christmas. I'm Joy. Welcome to my room. I thought I was going to be lonely. We then see Joy start talking to a fly in the room. I'm not sure how relevant this fly is going to be to the plot. It's possible this could be some sort of alien fly or something like that that gets revealed later on in the episode. Or it might just be there to show how lonely Joy is. What? what? We then see a Silurian dressed in a manager's uniform enter through that locked door. We now know this Silurian is called Melnak, and he is going to be played by Jonathan Aris, known for playing Anderson in Sherlock, another Stephen Moffat written show. Joy points a hairdryer at Melnak, assumedly trying to make him think that it's some sort of weapon, which in response he puts his hands up to surrender and says, The starseed will bloom and the flesh will rise. The starseed will bloom and the flesh will rise. Which I'm really not sure what that line means. If you guys have any thoughts, please let me know in the comments down below. We then see the doctor enter with the same order as before, a ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. Ham and cheese toasty and a pumpkin latte. And looking behind him in the hallway, it doesn't seem to match what you would expect the hallway of this hotel to look like. And we also know he's not coming through the main entrance of the hotel room. He's coming from what can be assumed to be a locked cupboard. The hallway behind him looks a lot more like some sort of alien ship or maybe even an alien hotel and seems to match the background we see behind him in the earlier shot on the Orient Express. So could this be some sort of alien hotel that allows its guests to travel wherever they want through these locked hotel room doors? And that's pretty much everything we see in this preview for Joy to the World. I don't know how much of what we see in this is going to be relevant to the episode, how much of it is going to reappear throughout the episode, whether we're going to keep seeing these reoccurring locations that have been set up in this opening, and how much the Silurian Melnak, played by Jonathan Aris, is going to be featured in this episode. For me personally, it seems like a big part of this episode is going to be this alien hotel that allows you to kind of travel wherever you want and visit wherever you want. But let me know what you think this episode is going to be about in the comments down below and are you excited for this episode? With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, you'll also probably like the one that's on screen now.